Hi everybody. There are a number of uh, frequently asked questions that my CFIs get asked, so I thought it would be great to put a video together of uh, some of those questions and answers for you. So uh, those of you who are thinking about learning to fly or getting a license, uh, hopefully this will answer some of those questions. And if you've got any more questions, just uh, you know ask below in the comment section, and uh, perhaps in a later video we can put those together for you. So enjoy. How much does it cost to get a pilot's license? So to get a private pilot's license, a real ballpark estimate is about five to seven thousand dollars. A lot of that depends on how often you train and how quickly you pick it up as well. Do I have to pay it all up front? You don't have to pay for the airplane up front or the cost of the private pilot's license up front. It's simply pay as you go and you can pay with either cash, check, or credit card. How often should I train? As far as how often you train goes, I recommend two to three times a week. I know sometimes scheduling and budget does get in the way of that, but the more often that you train, the quicker you pick it up. A lot of the learning and the um, knowledge that you're gaining getting your license is based on a previous lesson. So the quicker that you train and the more often you train will build on that and end up saving you time and money in the long run. So how long does it take exactly to get your pilot's license? A typical person training two to three times a week takes about three to six months to get a private license. How old do you have to be to fly an airplane? The minimum age to solo, which means fly the airplane by yourself, is 16. And the minimum age to get your pilot's license is 17. You can start training at any age, but just understand that you can't solo an airplane until you're 16. Is there an upper age limit for learning how to fly? There's no maximum age to learn how to fly. You can be, you can start when you're 70, 75 or you can start when you're 13. It doesn't matter. What are the requirements for getting your private pilot's license? The requirements to get your private pilot's license, well the basic requirements are 40 hours of flight time. Of that, 20 hours needs to be with a flight instructor and 10 hours needs to be solo, which means that you fly by yourself. And of that solo time, you need actually five hours of cr solo cross-country time, which sounds really scary, but a uh, cross-country is just 50 nautical miles straight line distance. So from Twin Oaks to Corvallis is about 56 nautical miles, so that kind of gives you an idea of how far a cross-country has to be. And three hours of test prep, and as well as three hours of um, simulated, simulated instrument time which means that you're underneath a, a view limiting device, which means you will be um, just referencing the airplane and flying the airplane solely by the instrument. What is ground school training? So ground training is an essential part of your flight training. There are many different ways to fulfill the ground training requirements and learn the required aeronautical knowledge associated. One of them is to attend a formal ground school, which we offer here at Twin Oaks Air Park. It's typically a six to eight week course led in a lecture format by an instructor. Another way is to take and read the training materials on your own. We sell many different training materials from different manufacturers and your instructor can lead you along a good path. Do you follow a syllabus? So we do follow a syllabus here at Twin Oaks Air Park. There's many different syllabuses that are available. The most common two syllabuses that we use are from Jeppesen and ASA. Basically all of the syllabuses are going to follow three steps as far as getting your private license. The first step is just gearing your towards solo. It's getting you with the skills necessary to take off and land the airplane, uh, basically prep for some basic emergencies and also get your flying skills up to speed. The second stage of training is devoted to cross countries. With cross countries you'll learn how to navigate the airplane, um, learn about some emergencies procedures and also finding more distant air airports. This is one of the most fun segments of the training because you're actually going somewhere. Doing a cross country over to Newport, to Astoria, up to Seattle, Madras, Sun River, all of those with, are within our reach. What is a check ride? The third segment of training is test prep. In that segment, you will learn what you're going to need to do to take your test. And the test is not, I don't want to sound scary with tests, but it's called a check ride. And with a check ride, you'll meet with an examiner. Basically, they're called a designated pilot examiner, and what they're going to do is test your knowledge. They're going to sit down and do what's called an oral exam, 
The oral exam is asking you some basic questions about the airplane, some questions about your systems knowledge, regulation knowledge. That takes about an hour and a half to two hours. Once you pass your, check, your oral exam, then you'll go up with the examiner for a flight test. And in that, you'll go and demonstrate a few specialty landings. You'll demonstrate um, some steep turns, some ground reference maneuvers, just basically testing how well you can control the airplane and um, judging your general knowledge. Once you finish with that, you get a private pilot certificate and you're good to go flying from day one. Where can I go after I get my license? Once you get your license, the sky is literally the limit, no pun intended. You're able to take a single engine airplane, not in the clouds and not above 18,000 feet, but anywhere in the United States, Canada, Mexico, um, going out to the coast for a breakfast or lunch is within reason. Sun River, California, up to the San Juans is a great flight as well. Hey, can I rent a plane for multiple days? Yes, you can rent an airplane for multiple days once you get your license. We ask that you fly it for at least three hours a day or take it long enough so that you just put some time on the airplane. But yes, taking an airplane down to California, Salt Lake, some people have even taken planes all the way to the East Coast and flown down to Florida and then back. How are you charged for the plane? So you're charged on the airplane based on what's called the Hobbs meter. The Hobbs meter only runs on an airplane when the engine is running. Most lessons take about two hours and an hour to an hour and a half of that is actual flying time. So what does a typical flight lesson look like? So a lesson is normally two hours, which the first 15 minutes is you pre-flighting the airplane and going over any questions that you might have for, from the reading of the lesson plan. And then you usually normally fly for about an hour to an hour and a half. And then after that, you have about 15 to 20 minutes of signing logbook, as well as post-flight debrief, as well as scheduling for the next lesson. Where would we train? Our training is done at many different airports. All of the flights begin and end at Twin Oaks Air Park. However, we go practice landings at Hillsborough Airport, Aurora Airport, McMinnville, and many of the different airports in the local area. Your training is very um, broad, and uh, we trained for the real world. So what kind of planes would I be training in? So at Twin Oaks Air Park we have many different Cessna and Piper aircraft available for rent. We have Cessna 150, 172s, a Cessna 162 which is the Skycatcher. We also have a Piper Comanche which is this aircraft, a high performance complex airplane. We also have a Piper Apache which is good for twin training and airline transport pilot training. Also, we have a tailwheel trainer, a Cub Crafter Sport Cub. I'm pretty tall. How would I know what type of airplane to, to train in? Normally, people that are going for their private pilot's license stick to the 150 or the 172. And depending on your size, you want to go with the cheapest airplane that's actually possible for you to rent. If you are about five, about six feet and under 200 pounds, you'll fit no problem in a Cessna 150. Um, if you're if you're more comfortable to fit in a 172, which is a four seat airplane, that is a perfect training airplane as well. How many students have you had? As far as me personally, I've had over 50 passes, and I do training for private pilot all the way up through airline transport pilot. What documentation would I need um, coming from England to get my pilot's license in America? If you're a foreign citizen, you can definitely train at Twin Oaks Air Park. The process is very simple. All you need to do is get fingerprinted and approved by the TSA, the Transportation Security Administration. Once you get approved and all of our instructors are able to guide you with that process and get you started in the right path, you're paired with an instructor and you can complete all the training as you normally would if you were a U.S. citizen. What is the history of Twin Oaks Air Park? Twin Oaks Air Park is owned and operated by the Stark family. Bob and Betty Stark currently operate the flight training section as far as aircraft rental, hangar rental. Their son, Danny Stark, is the one that owns the maintenance shop and provides aviation maintenance services. Their daughter, Emily Stark, my wife, and flight instructor as well. well my name is Emily, <laughs> Emily Whippard. I'm actually the um, youngest daughter of the family that owns this airport. Well, we help operate the flight training and we're also been flight instructors. Both of us have been instructors for over eight years. And action. Hello.
<laughs> Whenever you're ready. So, how long does it, it take? It looks you like your dog is giving you a. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of trains would I be playing in? <laughs> Do you have to take an intelligence test? What is it? <laughs> okay, ready? Go. Brooklyn, how old are you? How, how, I can't remember. How, one more time. To fly an airplane. <laughs> the stupid tra the traffic is killing us. You're killing me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Nice. Okay. Let's do. A, let's do a second take. What should I say? Yeah, it's really bad. I can't, dude. I can't. I'm pretty tall. Uh, how do I choose what, what kind of airplane in that situation? <laughs> yeah, just do three. Four, okay. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it's like counting backwards with my fingers. I can do one, two, three, but three, two, one. I... Okay, we'll do it again. Okay. Where can I go after I get my license? <laughs> and then hold your, hold your sister's hand. Hold hands. Brooklyn, hold hands. <laughs> Can I go after I get my license? Huh? Screw that one up. <laughs> Alright, take two. How many flips in a row can you do at one time? Only one at a time. Only one at a time. <laughs> there you go. Huh? How often should I train? <laughs> Ready? I'm going to do one, two, three. You say Brooklyn. You say the fire. <laughs> Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs>